He's a storyteller par excellence. I'm a fan of his work, but it's the realism that gets you and that grips you. And I'm privileged to be in conversation with Hansal Mehta ji. Hansal ji, namaste. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And uh, let's hit the you know ground running and take the bull by the horn. So Faraz is your latest project. What's the story about? Uh, it is based and inspired by uh, an event that took place in 2016. Uh, there was an attack on a cafe in Bangladesh. So it is about that fateful night. Uh, and uh, it was the catalyst for the story was this character called Faraz, mm. uh, who was present at that uh, in that cafe mm. that night. So that sort of sparked my interest and I realized that this was not a story about Bangladesh alone. Mm. So of course it was Bangladesh's story but it was a story about our times, mm. a story about our youth mm. and a story about uh, our world. Mm. And I needed to uh, you know, tell this story to the world. Mm. But, but what is this story? Well, it is, as I said, it is uh, uh, this cafe in Bangladesh was held hostage by five young men yes. uh, for uh, not only a cafe, an entire country was, you know, on its uh, knees. Mm. Because of five young men whose motives were uh, largely unclear. And so I am trying to explore that night, you know, that w w what was going on? What were those boys doing there? You know, how does uh, how does one uh, you know turn to violence? Mm. You know, so I'm I was trying to explore various themes, also look at uh, the current generation, and uh, you know sort of juxtapose generational uh, dynamics with uh, our times, mm. and you know how they perceive things. You know, so and you sort of look at two sides of the coin, two people belonging to the same religion, both equally devout in their own ways, but interpreting religion differently. Yes. It's, it's also about perspectives, but it's very real, isn't it? For, for a filmmaker, usually they say you take a slice of the real, uh, you know, real and put it into real and you fictionalize it. But you are actually moving away from that fictionalized version of storytelling. Well, I actually do fictionalize. Mm. I, we have to take a dramatic liberty. Mm. You have to dramatize, fictionalize, and uh, try and tell the story. Uh, it's ultimately a film, Correct. and I have to engage with an audience. So you, but you have to go a little OTT or over the top. Not over the top, but you try to bring in uh, as much realism and naturalism as possible. Mm. But uh, you know, you have to maintain the cinematic elements of drama, and you know, so you have to engage with an audience to do that. Mm. But I do it with sensitivity, I do it with uh, the correct intent and to bring out the spirit of what happened. You know, you're trying to compress the story of 12 hours mm. into 1 hour for 50 minutes, 1 hour 45 minutes. So that, how do I say that most effectively? How do I take you as an audience uh, inside that cafe and feel the fear that those hostages felt that night. How do you know that the audience wants to watch something like this? Well, I think uh, audiences, uh, you know, like a current uh, a show called Trial by Fire, mm. you know, uh, it's a tragedy. It's a, yeah. it's a real life tragedy and uh, it's so much about grief Correct. and coping with grief. And you, it's found its audience. Mm. You know, people told me when I made the story of Harshad Mehta, yeah. why should somebody watch something as dry as the financial markets? Correct. And uh, here we are today. I mean, it's one of the most successful shows yes. uh, on uh, OTT platforms. Mm. So, uh, I think uh, every story has its audience. Uh, it needs the will of the filmmaker to bring those story, stories to the audience, to tell, to talk to the audience in a manner, to make them part of the story. Mm. You know, so, we cannot, you know, we, we underestimate our audiences. audiences. We believe that they are dumb enough to only see one kind of film or, or embrace one kind of story. They, there is an audience for every story. Uh, as filmmakers, we need to understand how, uh, how big we can, how much we can scale up, how much we can, uh, what is the 
uh, estimated size of the audience that will watch our film and accordingly build the economics and logistics Correct. around I was film. coming to that, yeah. like, that filmmaking is a cost operation too and you yeah. have to be profitable in order to be saleable, in order to get more projects so that you can continue to yeah. work in the genre that yeah. you want to work. So you keep that at the back of the mind when you always I, I believe uh, very firmly and I've always believed in that that budgets fail, films don't. Mm. You know, we, uh, if a film is uh, budgeted correctly, uh, you, it will uh, ultimately make money for the investors. Mm. And so, uh, this film also again, it's moderately budgeted. Uh, we are financially safe uh, with the film, mm. you know. Uh, so, my producer and very dear friend Anubhav has yeah. produced it. So, his only brief to me was, you know, don't go overboard with the budget and uh, make your best film for me hmm. and uh, I have tried to do both. Correct. And uh, I said, you know, just release it with pride yeah. and dignity and that's what he is doing. No, it's fantastic. But uh, how many people within the film industry have figured this out? Because uh, somewhere when we see this current scenario where films are being boycotted, there is rejection of certain kind of content. Um, and then there is a thrust that comes from the film industry which tends to say that, you know, it is all being motivated. Some people are deliberately trying to boycott ball. Nobody is wanting to boycott the film industry. Everybody wants to watch films. Do you believe the answer lies somewhere in between? That there is a disconnect of those who are making the films in the larger sense with what the audience wants. Has the audience taste, perception, desire, what they are expecting changed? No, I think, uh, you know, every industry, mm whether it is the automobile industry, whether it is uh, political parties, the business of politics, uh, all, every industry uh, comes, there they comes an inflection point Great. where you need to introspect, mm. where you need to sort of look inwards and see what, what do I do, what next. And so every industry goes through this curve, mm. you know, and I have seen it uh, multiple times. You know, we've had these lows and they said, oh, those, uh, in the cinema is finished. Mm. But, uh, you know, it rises because, uh, you know, audiences ultimately, uh, the cinema is that refuge where you can, uh, you know, go away from the life that you lead, you know, from unemployment, economic crisis. It's from, escapism, no? Yeah, not, not only escape, you, you can go away and uh, in the comfort of a cinema hall and watch a story, mm. you know, embrace a story. Now, what is that story? The different types of stories that will engage with an audience and I think we just have to keep reinventing that, keep at it, you know, uh, these trends will come and go. Mm, come and uh, yeah, they, I, I don't give them that much importance, uh, we, we gave them more importance than they deserved and uh, it just empowered those elements that kept doing it. You disrupting. Know, ulti yeah, disrupting. Ultimately, these were motivated robots. Uh, you know, they cannot change human, the, yeah. the creative human energy cannot be disrupted by a group of robots. Mm. I agree, but the counter to that is also that filmmakers need to respect what social sentiment is going to be. Filmmakers cannot get abrasive or uh, get away with hurting sentiments on one aspect. I am sure you would have also, when you pick up real subjects, the question would come to you also, what about the real victims, what about the survivors, what about the trauma that they are going through, why are you making them relive it again? And in your uh, attempt to say it as a film, are you somewhere trudging on their emotions? I am sure you would have also faced yeah, that. So. I, I do, I mean, I, uh, all I can say is that, uh, you know, we, uh, through my films, mm, through the sensitivity which, with which I tell my stories, I am trying to create empathy for the plight of those who were there that night. Mm. Through the victims of such mindless violence, I want to create empathy, a, a global empathy through these stories. That you know, you look at it and you know, you know you, humanity needs to wake up that you know, religion cannot be used as a pretext for violence. It can be any religion, mm. you know. We need to reclaim our religion from the hands of fanatic idiots. Mm. Mm. And that is the over, is that, that's the bigger message. And uh, it's done with empathy, it's done with sensitivity. And we've tried to keep it as dignified 
as possible. Mm. You know, there is no attempt to titillate or to uh, trudge, to sensationalize or to trudge upon uh, somebody's, uh, uh, you know, sentiments. Uh, see, uh, what is most important in the making of a film is the intent. Have I made this film for this massive Friday number? No. no. It is not. We are not even, even going to look at the weekend number. Mm. No, we, the audience, the film will find its audience. We are showing the film to people. We want to begin the conversation by showing the film in advance, letting people come to the audience, discover the film, and through the film, have conversations. Mm. And let the film grow. Let its audience grow. So there is no, there's no greed in the telling of the story. Okay. There is empathy. The sensitivity. So the intent of the filmmaker is something that must be understood and respected mm. in such times, you know. And uh, instead of just pointing fingers at the filmmaker, I think we need to work together. Why, why, am, I, why am I telling the story? Do you sit inside a movie hall when people are watching to try and gauge their reaction, no, how, no. how they respond to a story? And are you surprised that the same audience, you get two different feedbacks? Somebody says, Mada agya, The other says, uh, so, so which, a, then, which then do you believe is the more genuine feedback? How do you know that this person is saying from heart, this person seriously is giving me feedback? You cannot judge other people. Huh. You know, so my storytelling is also non-judgmental hmm. and I don't judge people for hmm. their opinions. Hmm. You cannot. Correct. You know, if you have an opinion that is contrary to mine, hmm. uh, I must respect you for having an opinion. Correct. And uh, I might argue with you. Correct. You know, and try to make you see my side, but why I mean, are you entitled to that? Uh, I look at it from a larger that did you did the film engage, uh, engage with you did did it affect you did it affect you enough to have you come and talk to me or have you explore that story further to question the things that I'm saying if you're able to question if you're able to debate then my film has done its job Correct. because I'm that kind of a filmmaker so I look at I mean I I don't as you said you know I don't sit with the audience but you will always find me in the projection room looking through the curtain at the audience <laughs> and looking at you know how many people are shaking in their seats. Yeah, how many you are know? rapt attention, yeah, so how many I, are distracted. You know, a lot of people that. saw the film at the previews and said uh, the film is really tight, it's one hour 45 minutes, it's you know a very good length. We, we don't have an interval in the film. Correct. We, have re we are releasing the film without an intermission. Wow. We are requesting so the, the theatres. Yeah, because you have to be in there, you cannot suddenly break that uh, the that moment by going out to buy popcorn. फिर तो multiplex वाले कहेंगे सर हमारा धंधा कैसे चलेगा? Film शुरू होने से पहले खा लीजिए. आप order कर लीजिए. लेके आएगा कोई आपके पास. But I think the story ultimately what is the multiplex yeah. built for? For popcorn or for cinema? I think it's for cinema. Hmm. And we are trying. You know, no country in very few countries in the world besides you know have a, have an intermission. Correct. They don't. Largely, most films are. But do you also feel, since you've made content both for the Bada Parda and also for the OTT platforms, do you believe that there is the, the audience is very clearly dissected in what they want to watch on their personal space and what they will watch in a public area or on the big screen? Is this, you know, or is uh, there no line like that? I, I feel uh, data hmm. uh, is important, but its value is overestimated. Okay. Uh, uh, I think filmmakers have to make films with heart, you have to tell stories with heart. Mm. I was told, as I told you, I was told that Harshad Mehta, who will watch? Uh, this, I watched. This, huh, everybody watched it. <laughs> you know, the rest is history. Yeah. You know, the, there was conviction. The mm. producers, me, all of us were convinced that this is a story we want to tell. And it became, uh, it acquired a sort of cult status. Cult status. So, uh, I think we as filmmakers have to just focus on the business of telling stories and it is great that there are two mediums you know the the playing field is wider mm. you know that I don't only have to play a test match correct I can also play a t20 t20 I can have a ODI so you know films uh, so everything for every game there is an uh, audience yeah. there are connoisseurs of the test uh, of the larger format and the connoisseurs of the shorter format, shorter format. Like, like in reading in magazines, you know, uh, I personally prefer reading the New Yorker. Correct. And some people prefer reading a tabloid. Tabloid. So, uh, but both of them have something for the reader. Reader, correct. Yeah. And both of them have their own audiences. Yeah. But one more thing, you have to tell your 
movies ke liye kaise chunte hain and do you make it up or is is it by design or is just a coincidence that you don't work with the same artist again every time it's a new face and somebody who wows you with their performance mm, well i've worked with rajkumar for six films six films yeah, yeah. and <laughs> rajkumar i was about to say rajkumar is the exception <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. i worked with prati gandhi in three films now okay. he's he's playing mahatma gandhi very soon oh, uh, uh-huh. in on in uh, a show that i'm making mm. uh, but no i just for me it is being honest and truthful to the story you're telling mm. so how did you decide on the characters so this Europe? film needed that young raw uh actors people mm. who uh you know sort of uh you come with no preconceived image mm. so you know when you are watching it you almost feel they are, these are real people mm. and that was the whole thing you know so the film does not have a clear protagonist while it's called faraz and it's a proper noun yeah uh, faraz actually right. means standing tall standing tall you know and so it is more about uh, in the face of adversity uh you know there's some courage that uh, the human mm. spirit the the you know how you harness the human spirit in those times of adversity mm. so it's a lot about that you know our my protagonist faraz mm. uh, actually comes into his own somewhere 40 50 minutes into the film wow yeah. you know so until then you don't even know you almost question why is the film called faraz, faraz. and that's the thing that's you know you have to play that little bit of that game with the audience i mean you can't just say uh, every hmm. character is not shahid azmi correct you know yeah, every I character think. is not pathan pathan <laughs> <laughs> no i don't agree you know so hmm. uh, but uh, you choose the right actors for that and i think these the, we've got nearly seven uh, absolutely fresh yeah, uh, I know. talents and it's a, it's a pleasure the moment you see them out there you know and when and my success is in the work that they do after this yeah that that's absolutely true yeah. but i have also want to ask you this and i'm going to try and put you in the spot there when you work with someone like a manoj bajpai or a rajkumar rao and then you work with absolute freshers or newbies first timers which is easier nothing is easy uh, or nothing or is difficult or which is tougher let me ask you. it's not tough hmm. you know what is tough is when uh, you are when i'm working with somebody who is not sincere with their craft craft when your craft is clouded by uh, selfish motive when it is clouded by a lack of dedication to the scene mm. it is not in service of the scene mm. then i find it tough otherwise if you are all working in the in service of the film in service of the story uh, all of us we are all doing the same job so if you're working together it's a joy and i i make films because telling stories gives me uh, joy you're not tempted lord of the box office friday masala film ek to bada kuch aisa bada karenge some day who matlab you know ye sari cheeze i don't you cannot design a film to be uh, a hit at least i cannot you know i did not uh, design scam to be this uh, uh, you know it it happens it i think intent has to be to be able to engage with the audience you know you never know i mean tomorrow uh, faraz will capture the nation's imagination and uh, will start a movement you know everybody will say i am faraz mm. which means i am standing tall standing tall so standing and that's tall. what we need to do mm. the need of the r is to stand tall mm. stand tall against religious against fanatism fundamentalism against, yeah against polarization, polarization. against uh, those who divide us in the name of religion those who propagate violence in the name of religion hmm. no religion preaches violence i want to reclaim my religion hmm. from the hands of these fanatics hmm. and my by being passive i cannot do that hmm. so this is the active voice of uh, hansel mehta speaking baat karte karte kafi samay nikal gaya hansel ji so i wish you all the very very thank best you, and wonderful to speak with you it's pleasure. been a pleasure thank, thank you so much thank you all the very very best thank, thank you, you.